Hey folks, I wanted to record a short video for you guys to help you as you do your photo assignments this semester. In particular, this video is going to focus on how to properly fill out your photo log for the photos that you take. Most of the assignments that you do this semester require the submission of a photo log. Uh, and so I wanted to go over with you how to fill that out properly. So I have our Canvas course opened here, and in particular I've opened in module number three into what is titled Photo Exercise Number One. And you can see that there's some, some instructions here uh, for the photo exercise. It indicates that you're going to be taking a total of 24 photos. Um, it indicates to you that you're going to be submitting only seven of those photos to me. Uh, it also indicates that you're going to be uh, submitting a photo log, and you're also going to be doing a photo critique. And you'll read through those instructions yourself uh, as you do this assignment. Um, there is a, a link for a template for the critique that you're going to do. I'm going to talk more about that in another video. But also notice in the instructions there's two links uh, so that you can download uh, a version of the log that you're going to fill out. One of them, uh, if you want to, if you use Microsoft Office, you could download the Word version of it or you can also use the Google Docs version of the log. Either one is fine. Uh, if I click on this Google Docs version, I'm going to get a Google Doc that opens up. It's going to look like this. And this is what your photo log is going to look like. Uh, it's got several columns that you need to fill out. Uh, the top portion of the log where it says camera model, this is where you type in uh, the type of camera you're using. For example, if you've rented a camera from our department, you're probably using uh, either a D40 or a D50 camera. The one I'm going to be using for my little demo here is a D50, so I'm going to type in D50 there. Uh, if you're using a Canon camera, then you type in the you know Canon and the model number you're using. But anyway, that's what that first uh, blank is where it says camera model. It just tells me what type of camera you're using. So that if I need to help you later on, I can maybe look up the, the camera online. All right, the next part of the photo log, the most important part, is this... Um, table that we're going to fill out. And notice that there's five columns that you need to fill out as you're taking your photos. The first column that says photo number, um, that's the one where I, I find students make the mistake most often is they put the wrong number in that column. And uh, so I'm going to deal with that in a moment. But as you take each photo, the camera assigns a number to the photo. And so the number that goes in that column is the number that the camera assigns, assigns to the photo you just took. Uh, the next um, piece of information you're going to put in there for each photo is the focal length of the lens that you used on the camera when you took that photo, what the shutter speed setting on the camera was when you took that photo, what the f-stop setting or aperture setting was on the camera when you took the photo, and then the last column is a short description of what's in the photo. So, for example, let's say you took a picture of your dog uh, laying on the couch, then you would write in the description, you know, photo of dog on couch. Uh, and this is so that when I look at your photos later on, it's easy for me to quickly correlate your photos with uh, the information in the log. So that's what goes in the description area. And again, we're going to fill this out together in this video so you can kind of see that. But let's go back um, to the description for exercise number one. In photo exercise number one, it says in the instructions that you're going to be taking a total of 24 photos for this assignment using the DSLR camera. Um, almost For almost every single photo exercise that you do, there will typically be uh, usually about 50% of the photos where I give you very detailed instructions in terms of what I want you to take photos of, the modes of the camera that you should use, uh, in some cases what specific shutter speeds or aperture settings you're going to use, and then quite often the, the other 50% of the photos you take will be photos of whatever you want using a variety of different settings. And that's the case in this first photo assignment. If we look through the instructions, and you can look through them yourself, of course, when you're ready to do the assignment, you'll see that the first 11 photos you take for this assignment have very detailed instructions in terms of you know, what, what mo mode to use the camera in or what focal length to use the lens on. But then at the end, it, you notice that the, the final 13 photos for this assignment it says that you can take photos of subjects of your choosing in whatever location you want. But the most important thing is every single photo you do take, uh, whether it's the ones that you chose the subject or whether it's the ones where I've specifically specified what you're taking pictures of and where you're taking pictures, every single photo you take must be documented in this log. So here's our log. Uh, even if I'm taking photos, and even if I accidentally just push the button and, and I snap a photo on accident, 
I shouldn't delete that photo. I still need to log that photo in my photo log. So every single time the camera goes off, every time that shutter fires and takes a photo, that photo, good or bad, needs to be uh, included in this photo log. So a real quick word about the photo assignment too. Um, for photo exercise number one, there are some very specific instructions for at least 11 of the 24 photos. I want to be clear, when you're taking your photos for your photo assignment, you don't actually have to take them in a specific order. So even though in the instructions here it says picture number one, that doesn't actually have to be the first photo you take. Uh, for example, if you want to start with pictures two, three, and four, and then come back to picture one number later, that would be totally fine. Uh, in fact, circumstance might actually require that in some cases, uh, for example, some photo assignments might actually ask you to take photos outside during, uh, with bright sunlight during the day. Well, if you start this assignment at night, then you'd obviously have to wait until the next morning or the next day to actually take those photos. So what you could do then is take the photos you can at night and then wait for daytime the next day to take the other photos. So it is totally fine to take the photos out of sequence. Uh, just make sure you properly document them in your log. So um, we're going to actually skip picture number one to start with. We're going to actually go in exercise number one to take pictures two, three, and four, which the instructions say to take three pictures of a stationary subject, uh, could be a person or an object, in any lighting environment. So again, it could be inside, outside, sunlight, uh, could be under uh, fluorescent lights or incandescent lights. And it says that for these three photos, you're going to be changing the focal length of the lens on the camera. So um, what I have set up here on my table, I'm going to move my computer over just a little bit, is I have uh, a subject. I've chosen this little diamondback zombie statue as my subject, and I have my camera set up here. Now, my camera is set up on a tripod. You're not likely to use a tripod a lot this semester. I have it set up on the tripod so that I can hold my other camera here as I'm working. Um, but let's say I'm getting ready to take pictures two, three, and four. I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera on. Let's go ahead and look back at the instructions here. It says that I'm going to take three photos of that object. I'm going to take one photo uh, at a zoom length, uh, sorry, a focal length on my zoom lens at 18, one at 35, and one at 55. And it says that the mode of the camera should be set to auto mode. So if we look at the top of the camera, all right, so here's our exposure mode dot dial on top. We want to make sure this is set to auto mode, which we can see it as I could turn it to P mode or shutter speed priority. I'm going to turn it to auto mode, All right? And it says the first photo, I want to take it a focal length of 18 millimeters. So I'm going to adjust my zoom to 18 millimeters. All right, now for some photos you take this semester, you're going to have control of the camera in terms of being able to manipulate shutter speed and aperture. But for these three photos, uh, it says we're supposed to take these photos in auto mode, which means I don't really have any control over the shutter or aperture, but that doesn't mean I don't need to write those down in my log. So I'm going to go ahead and, and with my camera here, I'm going to go ahead and point my camera at my subject. I'm going to reach around here and I'm going to focus my lens. All right. And then I'm going to reach up here and I'm going to snap a photo. Now I'm in auto mode, so in this particular case the camera is actually choosing to set the flash off, which again in auto mode I don't really have any control of. But I'm going to go ahead and snap my photo, and then notice on the back of the camera, the, ca the photo I just took shows up here. Now I want you to notice something. Notice in the top right hand corner on my display, let me see if I can readjust my focus here. See that in the top right hand corner it says 56 of 56? Now why does it say that? This is the first photo I've taken today. But, okay, let me turn this back on again. But this is not the first photo that's on my memory card in my camera. I've taken photos previously. In fact, I can actually show you that there's, there's quite a bit of photos already on my camera. So that's important. Because when I, when I write this photo that I just took in my log, I'm not going to write it down as picture number one. I need to indicate in my log that it, the photo number for this photo is the one assigned to the, the camera assigned to it, which in this case is actually photo number 56. It says 56 of 56 because there's already 50, there's 55 photos on there. I just took another one. Oh, camera just turned off again. So this one I just took was actually number 56. So if we come back to our computer here and we're getting ready to, to log this photo. So I'm going to pull my log up. The photo I just took was actually photo number 56, so I need to put that in my log. 56, so that first column is photo 56. 
Now, what I need to record next is what was the focal length of the lens when I took that photo? Well, I can come back to my camera here and I can look at the top of my camera and I can see that I had my focal length set at 18 millimeters. So if we come back to our log, I'm going to type in 18. I could just put 18. I can put 18 mm, meaning 18 millimeters. Now, what about shutter speed and f-stop? Well, if we look at the top of the camera, this is a D50. My shutter speed and aperture settings or f-stop settings are listed right there in that display right on top. And I can see that when I took the photo, my, my shutter speed was set at 60 and my f-stop was set at f3.5. Now, there's a couple other ways I could take a look at this. If we look through the camera lens, all right, when we go and use this camera, I'm going to have to try to be as steady as I can here. Oops, having a hard time here. We'll see if we can get it. Doesn't want to focus for us here. But at the bottom, see where there's, it's all green there? It's kind of going away on me. But if I could get my camera here to focus on that, I'd be able to see that we can actually see the shutter speed and aperture settings down there as well. But the other way we can do it is if once I've snapped my photo, if I pull the photo up on the back, and I do that by pushing this button here that's in the got a little triangle on it, I can pull up that photo. If I using this little pad here, if I push the up arrow, notice how some information pops up here. And I can see that for this photo, the shutter speed setting I used was 1 over 60, or we would just say 60. And my aperture was f3.5. And I can also see it even says what my focal length was, which is 18 millimeters. So I can go back again if I want to. Pull that back up again. So shutter speed of 60, aperture of f3.5, and 18 millimeters. So again, if I come back to my log, I type those values in here, and so they can see my shutter speed was 60, or you could put 1 over 60 if you wanted. My aperture was f3.5, or you could just put 3.5, that's fine. But now I need to put in a description, and remember this was a photograph of a little statue, so I could put, uh, you know, figure, or let's type in photo, if I could spell right, photo of figurine on table. Or I could even, if I want to be more specific, I could put photo of zombie figurine on table, right? And then, again, this photo was taken at 18 millimeters. The, if I go back to the assignment instructions, the assignment instructions say then to take a photo uh, of the same thing at 35 millimeters. So I could zoom in for my next photo. So if I come back to my camera here, now I'm going to zoom my lens to 35 millimeters. All right, and again, I'm going to focus, and I'm going to go ahead and snap my photo. So again, the photo I just took shows up. Again, we can see now we have, this is photo number 57. And again, if I want to see my settings, if I push up here, I can see that my settings are, at this time, a shutter suit of 60, but notice how the camera actually changed the aperture to 4.5, and so I would have to come back here to my photo log. So this is number 57, 35 millimeters. This time I'm a little more zoomed in. My shutter speed stayed at 60. My f-stop went to f4.5, and again, this is just another photo of zombie figurine on table. What I might actually want to do, since, since I didn't, I took the photos a little bit out of order from the assignment instructions. Remember the assignment instructions, if we go back here, indicate that I should have taken the photo of the white piece of paper first, or I could have, I didn't need to. Um, but maybe in my log, I might want to indicate that uh, this is actually, if I wanted to, I could maybe in parentheses say 
picture two from instructions. Right, and then I could do the same thing down here. I could say that this one's actually picture three from the instructions. Again, sorry, with my spelling here. That way, just as I'm, I'm looking later on when I'm trying to do my critique, um, I can see that maybe I took the photos a little bit out of order, which again is totally fine as long as I document that in, in, my, in my log. So um, if we go back to the instructions, maybe I saw, oh, you know what, I forgot to take picture number one, which is the white piece of paper. So if I take a white piece of paper, you know, I have my white piece of paper, I put it down on the ground, I'm getting ready to take a photo of it. So the instructions say that I should have the camera in the P mode this time. So I want to adjust my camera to P mode. And again, if I look at the instructions for the assignment, it should be a low light situation. So I'm going to actually go and turn the lights off in the room. So I'm going to walk back over here to my light switch. I'm going to turn the lights off so it's a little bit darker, not too dark. Low light doesn't mean dark, just means lower light. All right, and then it says I'm supposed to use the built-in flash. And so there's a little button on the side of the camera. If I push this button here, it pops the flash up, which is already up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and look through my camera. All right, make adjustments. And I take a photo. All right, and so now I want to, again, I want to take a look at this in my log. So if we, all right, this time we got, we got kind of the paper and the figurine in our photo, but that's okay. Again, we're just trying to get this concept down for keeping the log. So this time it's, if we come back to our, computer here. All right, so this time the photo of the paper, even though it's photo number one in our instructions, it's actually photo 58 on our cards. We're going to put 58. Uh, again, what was the focal length of the lens? Again, we can check that, but uh, in this case it was 35 millimeters. The shutter speed was at 60. I don't remember what the f-stop was, so we're going to come back here. I'm going to go ahead and pull my photo back up. I'm going to pull my information up by pushing up. And so again, I, I wasn't sure what my f-stop was set at. So, oh, f5. So I'm going to come and type in f5. And now I'm going to put in the description, photo of white paper. Sorry, let me adjust the focus here. Photo of white paper. And if I want to, I could put uh, picture one in the instructions. All right, so this is how you're going to keep your log. Every single photo that I take, I need to record the photo number, the focal length of the lens when I took the photo, the shutter speed, the f-stop setting, and a short description. Make sure again the description is specific enough so when you're looking at your photos later on, and so when I as your instructor look at your photos, I can tell which ones are which. Uh, and remember, you don't have to take the photos in the sequence specified in the instructions, right? You can take them in whatever order you want. You may want to indicate in your description, in addition to telling me what's in the photo, you may want to indicate in your description uh, which uh, photo in the instructions that photo is referenced to. Um, but most importantly, it's most important that when you're documenting your log, that the photo number in this far left column matches the photo number that is that the camera assigned to that picture. So again, even though picture number one was in the instructions was of the white piece of paper, it actually was photo 58 on our card because we already had several photos on our card originally. So anyway, that's how you keep your photo log. We're going to use the information from this photo log to be able to do our critique. And so uh, make sure you watch that video as well. I hope this was helpful, you guys.